Well, ladies and gentlemen, we got another disaster to talk about. Yes, we had the BBC Samurai situation a while ago. We're not talking about that. We had the Star Wars Outlaw situation. Once again, we're not talking about that. We we're talking about this Black Myth Wukong game, the monkey game, right? And apparently they are saying this game is sexist. Don't have diversity. This game needs diversity. That's what they're talking about. What? This is a game based on monkey, bro. What the actual hell? Like the video if you think there are two genders. Dislike the video if you think there are 5,000 genders. And ultimately, this is what they want. So they really did attack Stellar Blade. Never forget, they did attack Stellar Blade. <laughs> and this is what they wanted instead. I, I, and I cannot show you the actual Eve character because my video ended up getting hit the other day. So there's that. So I guess uh, this is what they like. I, I guess this proves the point further. Like the video, subscribe if you're brand new. Shout out to the homie Asman Gold. Check this. I got a bunch of clips about Black Myth Wukong. It should be noted that allegations against game science have surfaced over the years via reports of the developer fostering a sexist culture and work environment, with mm. numerous women in this the game community, yeah. community yeah. highlighting these problems within the studio, right. as well as backlash following crude and. I'm pretty sure a bunch of gamer dudes are working on this game, and this is why they're calling this game sexist. And they, they probably want to make a, a female characters look attractive rather than this. And they are being accused of being sexism and, or sexist in this case. Controversial social media posts by Game Science <laughs> co-founder Ji Feng. As of this recording, Game Science has repeatedly refused to comment on the allegations. Although because the reason why they don't comment on the allegations is because there are only allegations and the company isn't accountable to GameSpot or IGN or Kotaku or Polygon. They're not accountable to any of these companies. Facts. Facts. And if you actually went back and you looked at what happened, what ended up happening was that the game itself was, or sorry, that the people wrote about it. There was like one person that wrote about it and then somebody else wrote that other people were writing about it. And now it's that people are writing about it. But the truth is that it was just really one person who was complaining. And I think this is something that a lot of these these like, game game developers need to understand is that you're not really accountable to a publishing studio or like sorry a, a, a journalism studio like these people are not your friend they're not trying to help you and if they call you out for something you shouldn't respond to them because you're not accountable to them uh, nobody in the gaming community respects them nobody cares about what their opinions are and to the extent that they do care it's because they're mad because they said something stupid again Thanks. so the idea that that like Black Myth Wukong or Game Science needs to address this or they need to, uh, you know, respond to the allegations. Why? Yeah. Who decided? Uh, uh, honestly, gamers just care about the game being good and game looking good and game feeling good. No pushing of this woke ideologies, no, no politics, generally speaking. And if a game is good, a game is good. Simple as that. Simple as that. That's what gamers care about. You suckers care about like checkboxes, DEI, pushing a woke politics, this and that. Uh, making a, a, a video game character gay uh, and using Yasuke, prime example, right? Like they made uh, Yasuke a real life person who was not gay. They ultimately made him gay, right? He was not even gay. They still made him. If he was, that makes sense. Talked about it a billion times already. This is what they care about, man. Gamers, on the other hand, they don't give a damn. You straight, you not straight, we don't care. Game is amazing. Game is not pushing or shoving crap down my throat. I love it. I love it. Look at the graphics, sir. Look at the gameplay. I mean, damn. This game looking crazy. Impossible. This game's crazy. Shout out to the homie Hypnotic. I'm going to play you this clip. And we're going to get back to Asmund Gold in a second, all right? All right, Take ladies this. and gentlemen, it is time to talk about Black Myth Wukong. Now, a lot of people who hate on my channel, they always like to say the following. They like to say, oh, you don't speak about nothing positive. And that's because they don't watch my manga channel, which is filled with positive news, by the way. Or you only like to hate on things. You don't like to tell people what you like, etc., etc., etc. Those are the people that don't pay attention, mind you, to anything positive. They only watch negative content and then tell you all you do is make negative content. But that's besides the point. Black Myth Wukong is a video game that I've been looking forward to for a while now. I'm actually super excited because it's very close to release and I cannot wait to play it. And regardless of what SBI and other DEI consultancy firms have tried to do to ruin the image of hmm. Black Myth Wukong and also the gaming urinalists uh, basically working side by side with the DEI consultancy firms, apparently it has hit 85,277 concurrent players on just the benchmark tool alone. Sheesh. 
that's insane, man. Because if you really think about it, games like Concord, PlayStation exclusive, right? Or coming to PC as well, but one of the PlayStation games. Listen, I'm not hating on PlayStation. This is not about PlayStation and Xbox. I know some people sometimes like, hey, how dare you say PlayStation bad? Or how dare you say Xbox bad? Uh, banter's fine. Memes good. I love the memes as well. Uh, console Wars, banter, memes are fine. But here's the thing, though. My point is that it's a big-ass PlayStation game, and... You want to know how many people were playing? Less than 2,400 people were playing. Yeah, even with free-to-play open beta, right? Like, it, when they did free-to-play open beta, it had less than 1,200 people playing. When they did closed beta initially, so for which you would need to pre-order the game or you would need the code for it to be able to access the game, right? Uh, yeah, when they did closed beta, less than 2,400 people. When they made it free, the game was apparently so bad i did not play it but people are saying it's so bad that i don't even want to play it for free you know that is absolute ludicrous right now so you got all the negative marketing in the world and it's a playstation title the game is getting pushed and shoved down our throats and guess what nobody want to play that game black myth wukong uh and seriously I, of course i heard about this game but i didn't hear much too much about this game and now that the trailer's out, gameplay's out, this game looking lit, man. It's looking, it's looking fresh, it's looking creative as well. And it's a game apparently I'm hearing. It's a monkey game, it's a monkey game, and they're mad. They want diversity. They want diversity. What kind of diversity you want, bro? It's a monkey game. Let the monkey, leave the monkey alone. Leave the monkey alone. The monkey has rights too, you feel what I'm saying? Damn, this thing is crazy. Shout out to Hypnotic. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is a massive success in my opinion, okay? Because this is only a benchmark tool. That is it. A benchmark tool. Wait for it's it. not even the game itself. This is going to be a hot, hot seller. There is no doubt about it. And the more drama that surrounds it from these losers like IGN or these other losers like uh, SBI, Sweet Baby Inc. and whatnot, whenever there's drama surrounding them, that is going to be a something that is going to probably, I would say, put this game into the stratosphere in terms of success when otherwise yeah. this would have just been under the Souls-like game. They probably would have been somewhat successful, but not to the level that it's about to be. So let's get into yeah, the article guys yeah. from that part place but of course yeah, before we do same, if you are same, new same, yeah like and subscribe like and subscribe same way same way uh, that stellar blade was right stellar blade sold like a couple of million if i'm not mistaken it did one million units uh if i'm not mistaken and i wouldn't be shocked if in the end and and it does like two three maybe even five millions right in the long run of course i'm not sure how many units it sold i heard something like a million uh, but that was like, you know, during launch, around the launch time. And I don't think Stellar Blade would have done a million plus units had it been, had it not been the, the negative marketing. Had it been that we never had any negative marketing, it probably wouldn't have done a million plus units, okay? That's a fact, okay? That's a fact. The gameplay, the, the Eve character, the, the non-woke stuff, just, uh, you know, a dude being passionate about video games and making video games for the fans and for the gamers. You know, that was a W, right? But then, you know, they started hating it. Sweet Baby Ink was like, yeah, how dare you guys did not involve us, right? E -e -e -e, right? Uh, and gamers were like, okay, we gotta support it. You know, we, we gotta we gotta, we gotta, gotta hold our controllers tightly, okay? Dearly even. And we gotta go for it. Pre-order now. Uh, and then everybody started pre-ordering. Everybody started buying the game. And we all saw the hopium around that time. And they were just, uh, you know, not feeling it. Of course they were not feeling it. And you know what? They're now, again, not feeling feeling the black myth wukong and what's this gonna do uh it's gonna make people buy the game it's gonna make people be aware um and, and quite frankly of course like i heard about this game even uh without and uh before this backlash uh before these uh allegations and all that i i heard about this game but but i wasn't like super into it now i'm learning about this game i'm trying to find out about this game and it does look good though so uh, I'm thinking about getting the game myself. Had it been that we didn't have this much drama, I don't think I would be thinking about buying the game. And I feel like that this applies to a lot of people and it already hit 85,000. That's crazy. That is crazy, man. Do here, just consider hitting that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it and like the video to push us out into that YouTube algorithm. So the headline reads, Black Myth Wukong Benchmark Tool hits 85,277 concurrent players despite media smears against the developers. I think that is amazing. The official Black Myth Wukong account on X announced that the benchmark tool went live on Steam on August 12th. It wrote, prepare yourself. It's almost time to start your adventure. The Black Myth Wukong benchmark tool is now available for free download on Steam. This tool allows you to preliminarily check your PC's hardware performance and system compatibility when running the game. You can customize the benchmark settings to preview game visual. This is a benchmark? 
This is only benchmark numbers we're talking about? Oh shit! Oh shit! So you're saying that 85,000 people downloaded the, the, to benchmark to see if they can play the game or not? That is crazy, bro. 85,000 people already? That's insane, man. That's insane. Yeah, I can see this game do crazy numbers. Absolutely and performance on their different graphic options it continued this tool is a pc benchmarking application specifically developed for black myth wukong it is separate from the game itself and it is non-playable your benchmark okay. results uh, can assist the development team in better identifying potential software and hardware compatibility issues before the official game launch game hmm. science concluded this will facilitate further assessment of potential performance risks and sporadic issues ultimately enhancing the final release quality of black myth wukong now love it Love it, love it. Oh, uh, this is absolutely pathetic, man. These are uh, gonna be crying when the game comes out and it sells like crazy. That. Who decided that you get to make something up about someone and then they have to tell you whether it's true or not? Or even, it, let's assume that it's real. Why do they have to talk to you about anything? Who are you? You're nothing. You're like, really, like, and that's always been my perspective with stuff. It's like, you're not accountable to anybody. Somebody's mad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nobody did. Uh -oh. It has removed some of the offensive wording in its marketing materials that has contributed to the misogynistic culture. Yeah. Further details. Uh, they, okay, so these devs were working on this game and they had a cat lying around. How dare they have a cat on their desk right now? Right? <laughs> Let's be mad about that, right? Let's be mad about that. On these allegations can be found at a link in the description. Yeah, so this is the reason why people are happy that game studios and these, uh, what do you call it? Not game studios, but like uh, these like games publishing places are link in description for the allegations. Uh, they're falling off basically, and I can show you what the problem here is, right? Because you look okay. at GameSpot, yeah. and if you look at their videos, right? I mean, they're trying to they're trying to effectively do what uh, what do you call IGN? it? Uh, what, what IGN does, but they're <laughs> basically <laughs> doing it go, worse. And yeah. if you look at, we'll open this up, Google Trends. I'm yeah. going to explain why they do this and what's happened. Uh, GameSpot. So it's a website. Uh, we'll look at the website, right? And then we'll look at worldwide. And let's look at since 2004 to present. And so this is the reason why a lot hmm. of these game studios are upset. Is yeah. that their relevance and importance has dropped off. And the decline Holy. is so dramatic that when you look at it in an abstract... Crazy. It can't even be measured anymore yeah. because it's just going from fractions of one. Damn. You know what? Like, I, I would say around 2010s, uh, this era was so good, man. I would say like 2007, uh, 8 to like 2012s, that era was amazing. I would say 2013, 2015 even. Uh, we, we had good games. We had really solid games and that was the peak. You know, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 era was the peak. And that's when journalism was also very good. I feel like that we had really good games and uh, that's why they didn't have to do any of that crap. They were simply just dropping gameplay, raw gameplay videos, interviews sometimes even, I guess perhaps talking and reviewing about the game. And they had positive things to say because the games were generally positive. So it was like, you know, a game comes out very good, perceived very well by the community. They make a video on it, get millions of views on it. They review the game. They, of course, the game is looking good, the community is happy with it, and they're also happy with it, so they had nothing bad to say about the game. So guess what happens? They review the game, say good things about it, organically, okay, not like making it up. And uh, their reviews are perceived well by the community, and ultimately everybody's happy. And they were soaring, their popularity was soaring, but I guess uh, now we gotta get down to, hey, 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 hey. Uh, how dare they, they leave the monkey, man? The monkey needs, uh, we need more diversity for the monkeys, man. We need more diversity for the These monkeys. These people have completely destroyed their credibility. They've destroyed their careers. And I think they've in, they've in fact destroyed the entire, the future of their entire industry. And this is what's happened. And it's happened, checked IGN as well. Well, what I'm saying is like, I, I can look at any of them. They're gonna follow this same trend. It's approaching zero, it is. And if you look at, you know, you look at the past five years, right? Uh, no, I get that, but but you gotta also do YouTube search. I feel like that on their channel, they're still getting, like, a lot of views. But maybe their website isn't, like, killing it the way it was killing it before. They're still doing fine on YouTube, right? At least IGN. I, I have IGN in my mind, actually. My bad. I want to make sure you guys understand this, is that even inside of the past five years, it still is going down. 
And so in order to measure their decline in an accurate way, you have to actually go down into the past five years because the like 2004 to present, like the decline is so extreme that it's not measurable unless you zoom in on it. There's so many yeah. games new sites. I don't know anybody else uh, news this. The only reason I go to find them is the best method for getting past a spot in the game I'm stuck at. Really? Because I just go to YouTube. Like that's the way I see it. Sounds like OTK has a chance to capitalize on that market with accurate reviews and open honesty. Well, here's really what the problem is. The problem is that games reviewing is simply not something that, and I could talk about this a lot. I don't really want to get into it too much, but we could go into it later on after I finish the video. But either way, um, you can see like this decline, it's not even measurable unless you zoom in. Yeah, and these crazy, companies have effectively crazy. destroyed their entire credibility and everything that they stand for has been completely trivialized. No, I, I agree with I agree with him, but I also believe that uh, competition also got stiff as well. So competition, there's so many other websites now. Everybody's competing for traffic, and uh, there are so many different articles on the same game. So yeah, there is a whole lot of that with the ranking factors too. It's all of the above. It's all of the above, honestly. But it's not just that they destroy their credibility. That that's a big factor too. And uh, you know, when they do crap like that then of course uh, it's not gonna help them in any way shape or form either They're, they've actually destroyed their own industry and it's observably true by every metric that we can see and i can give you another piece of advice okay. uh let me see if i can find it here not not advice sorry a piece of uh, argumentation uh if oh. you go to gamespot.com let's just go uh we'll go on private window oh. are you sure you want to lead youtube uh no but i'll do it anyway um so if you look at this <laughs> let me see if they have ads on this Oh no, we don't have ads on this. Let me go ahead and open it up on Google Chrome because I don't have the, the stuff on there. <laughs> and so with like a lot that. of these, so you have you like one like ad, you have the privacy policy, two ads, and then, okay, that's not an ad, that's good. Okay. Uh, three ads, and then four ads, five ads. So there's five and, and to be honest another factor is uh, for their decline he said uh, he searched on web right so not youtube their youtube views are fine i think their youtube views are fine 50k uh, of course could have been better and in the long run it's probably gonna be 100k or maybe even more than that easy i, I think their youtube views are fine it, it's just that nowadays we're also living this is also a factor listen i'm not trying to defend them or anything like that I don't like the fact that they they are doing this crap, right? The game looks amazing. Talk about the game, right? Uh, why do you want to push woke politics and all the 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 general politics, uh, diversity, this and that, bro? The game is it's a monkey ass game. It's a monkey ass game. Let the monkey alone. Leave the monkey alone, okay? <laughs> well, well, let me tell you, it's a lion game. You got like animal like creatures. Like this is a different game, bruh. But I also do believe that the audience, all of us, because this is true for me, I don't like reading articles. I do it for these videos, though. You know, I'm, you know what I mean? If I want to cover the news, yeah, I would go down on the articles. But after that, after I read the headline or a little bit of the article, I'm leaving. Uh, I'm assuming that's also true for most people. Generally speaking, like, most people would rather watch videos than go on these articles. Because think about it this way. In the end, if there is news, you're gonna hear it on Facebook, Twitter. Maybe you're gonna click on the article, but most of the time you're gonna see it on your YouTube homepage or in your subscription. Most people don't even go in subscriptions anymore. It's the homepage, right? On browse features. So you're scrolling, scrolling, scrolling on the, the YouTube, uh, on mobile home feed, right? You see the video, boom, you click on it. You get the news from the creator you subbed or not subbed from. And, and you see them read an article. You see the article directly in the video. So it's like, text to speech kind of almost it, it feels that way right so seconds do that instead i do that instead i rather watch videos than read articles it just happens to be that if i want to make a news video then uh, I, I read the article then but if i wasn't doing it i would never go and read these articles bruh you feel what i'm saying so there's also that aspect to it as well yes declining but multiple reasons multiple reasons i've ads on one page so these people are desperately clinging on to staying relevant. They're doing everything that they possibly can to stay alive because they are in the death throes of their industry. Six? Oh, I might not have seen it. Oops. They Journalism, is, is that a big falling off because they seek audiences? Yeah, exactly. You see another world where people in our age are in charge? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll look at the rest of it and see if they talk about it anymore.
While Black Myth Wukong seemingly shares a lot of DNA with Souls-like games, Game Science itself yeah. does not consider it a Souls-like. In spite of that, the game features many staples of the action RPG subgenre, such as bonfire-like checkpoints that respawn enemies in the area around you, a flask for healing yeah. that has a finite number of charges and refills when you rest at a checkpoint, and upgrade points that are dropped and have to be recovered after death. Wukong's primary tool for walloping enemies is his staff, yeah, but you'll course. unlock additional stances over the course of Black Myth that give you different combos and move sets. Yeah, the game at looks the start, really good. however, you have yeah. a limited number of moves and abilities, I would have never a guessed. light attack and a heavier attack you can link together into combos. Yeah. Light attacks and dodging build up a focus meter, while heavy attacks consume focus. Dodging also depletes a stamina gauge that recharges quickly when you stop moving. And if you time the dodge perfectly to avoid an incoming strike, time slows a bit and you leave an after image of the destined one where you just were. That's Black cool. Myth also yeah, honestly, uh, it does look good. Uh, uh, I'm intrigued as well. I'm also getting good kind of God of War vibes as well. Uh, I'm not talking about like the recent God of War games, but like the OG, you know, God of War 1, 2, and 3, be because of the fighting and all that. Adds another wrinkle in the form of spells you can fire off in the midst of battle, mm -hmm. such as the ability to briefly immobilize I can't wait to not use any of those for the entire playthrough. Attack. However, spells not only have cooldown timers, but are also controlled by a sort of mana meter mm -hmm. that refills like your health flask whenever you rest. <coughs> Souls like <coughs> Black Myth Wukong is structured fairly linearly, although the game will feature a mix of focused corridors and larger, more open and explorable areas. And after facing off against some of the game's bosses, you'll sometimes be able to claim their weapon, giving you the ability to use it in a fight, transforming Wukong into the enemy you previously defeated. That's transforming cool. into a different character comes with its yeah, own health bar separate from the one yeah. you're using and healing normally. How long the transformation oh. lasts is dictated either by health or by doing too many cool moves. With your light and heavy attacks depleting a meter called might at different rates when either meter runs out you transform so you back. see like it's down at the bottom right so like obviously using the big abilities taking damage or time all of these reduce the time and so playing well keeps you in the combat or keeps you in the form longer a, a lot of games use things like this this is fine back into Wukong. Bosses like can also have numerous phases, like but this. rather than entering a new phase kind of. based on the Holy. damage dealt to them bosses will switch up phases based on how okay uh i i'd think the bosses look really good uh i have not played elden ring so this is gonna be an ignorant opinion not saying elden ring is bad first of all or anything like that it's not elden ring is good but i have not played elden ring right uh, but I, I gotta say based on looking at it and out as an outsider looking at it at it I think bosses in this game looks even better than Elden Ring talks. Well, the player is doing against them. Release yet in price. Black Myth Wukong will release on PC and PlayStation 5 on August 20th, 2024. So $60. Like six days, the game man. is meant to eventually come to Xbox Series X and S. However, yeah. there is no date currently for those platforms, with okay. that version of the game having been announced to be delayed $70 during this year's $70? Summer Game Fest. No reason was given for the Xbox delay, but it could potentially have to do with limitations around That's actually not true. They did give a reason. They said the developers literally said, nobody gives a fuck about Xbox. It's not a priority. The series S. Yeah, they actually, nope. With limitations around. That's actually not true. They did give a reason. They said the developers literally said nobody gives a fuck about Xbox. It's not a priority. The series what? S console, yeah, they actually look an it issue up. They that said has that. other titles such as Baldur's Gate 3. Mm -hmm. Black Myth Wukong is also a digital. <laughs> this and that, there is no way. Man, I I'm excited for this game. I have not been playing any games in the last. Uh, it it's been a minute, man. It's been a minute. I think I'm going to get this game, and it's going to be one of those games that I play like late at night, just a little bit every single night. You know what I'm saying? Like after I'm done with work and all that, right? Like this is looking good, man. It's looking good, man. Check out this video on the screen. Recently, we had some crazy news and we had new gameplay leaks for GTA 6 and it, they're looking very, very good. We got some high sleek as well, uh, drug trays and all that getting leaked out as well. Check out this video on the screen and I'll see you right there. If you already seen it, then check out the video on the left.